Hi, welcome to iHeart Art. My name is Lucy Calipari Marcuzzo, and today we're going to be experimenting with colour and still life. So I have some objects that I've brought in with me, some um, antique bottles uh, that I've grabbed from an op shop, very cheaply um, sort. A few different shapes uh, and colours. Uh, with interesting patina. So what I've done is I have um, taken a photo, arranged the, arranged the bottles, the objects um, with a sheet of white paper behind them just to cut out any background sort of noise going on in the image and um, photographed them and printed them onto black and white. What I'm going to do is just because it's uh, quicker is I have uh, some transfer paper. You can buy this, you can buy transfer paper from anywhere, but this is a specialty art uh, transfer paper. One side is essentially um, grey lead pencil, and the other side is like a wax paper, almost like a um, you know oven baking paper. So you know you you could probably make it just make you know something similar yourself with the grey lead and onto your baking paper. But I purchased this especially. It's, quite handy so what I'm going to do is pop that behind the photocopy I mean all the print printout and with a pen that has a, um, a reasonably pointy end tip trace around the objects so quickly do that um, onto my page why am I doing that just to give a bit of a, a really quick outline um, you could, of course, draw them from life. What I mean by drawing from life is to hold, you know, the, the bottle in front of you and, and draw that. Uh, if you're not com confident in doing that, perhaps you could start by, you know, blocking in, you know, blocking in the shapes. Uh, this bottle, for example, you could, you know, just uh, reduce down to uh, squares, for example, and then circles to get your object down. But this is just a quick way that I can uh, basically get an outline of what I want to uh, depict in my composition. So I'm just quickly tracing, um, getting the image down behind that. And I think I've got a bit of an image on the paper now, very quickly. So now I'm going to take that away and I mentioned that I am going to use colour. So I'm going to use a colourful palette and I'm going to completely steer away from the, um, well, almost completely, steer away from the actual colour of the objects just for a bit of fun. So I'm just going to mix up some colours. I have um, a few different uh, mediums today that I'm going to use. I have a watercolour palette, um, purchased watercolour palette that a friend of mine purchased. It's a great little travel size. Um, and that already has quite a few colours, a couple of blues, an orange and a red, a couple of yellows, browns, black, and a couple of greens. Um, I have a number of Paint pens, these are great, they're water, uh, water soluble, so that means you can actually um, mix them with water and, um, and use them that way. They're like an acrylic paint pen uh, or marker. So I've got a number of um, thicker and thinner um, nibs for that. And I also have some more paint pens because, you know, you can never have enough paint pens. Um, this is another uh, type of paint pen and you can grab any of these. They don't necessarily have to be from an art shop. You can go to, you know, um, an office supply store or a thrift shop and find something similar. Okay, so I have these acrylic ink. Um, so you can buy ink from anywhere, again, from any office supply store. This is a particular type of ink um, that is, um, as I said, acrylic. So it's opaque and um, quite vibrant. So that's an, uh, a really great range. I, and I just have the primary colours here. I have yellow, blue, red and white. Um, and from those three colours, yellow, blue and red, you can create a whole different, um, different colours. So for example, uh, blue and red make purple and red and yellow make orange. Um, blue and yellow make green. So you, know, you can really experiment and use those colours um, 
to do that. So I'm going to just, for the fun of it, um, mix up a little bit of orange. So I've just got some yellow. Oh, hang on. <laughs> orange, not green. Um, and add a little drop of red because this red is quite vibrant. So I've got a fine-ish brush, quite fine. And I'm just going to mix, mix that and hopefully it mixes to orange. So here we go. So now I'm just going to block in the outline that I had uh, before that I used with the tracing paper. So I'm just going to pop those in and it's probably not going to look like those objects because I'm steering away from those colours. However, this is looking a little bit like the glass of that little amber bottle. And I'm going to do that for all of them. I'm going to use this colour and, um, and then I'm going to see what happens when I add some additional colours. So these shapes are going to be relatively similar to the original objects, but they're not going to be the same. And that's deliberate. I just want that to kind of be a suggestion um, of those um, objects, those bottles. So I've just got a f um, some lines and shadows that and shapes that I was able to transfer with the transfer paper. So I've just blocked these in really quickly, just the outline of the of the objects with this lovely um, orangey amber colour that I managed to mix together with, with the yellow and just a tiny little drop of red. So I'm at that point. I'm going to continue working and we'll take a short break and I'll see you soon. Okay, so I'm going to change now and add I'm just going to mix a little bit of, I'm going to use a little bit of blue, just a really small drop because again the pigment is really concentrated um, in these inks and I'm going to add a bit more yellow in comparison to the blue. And mixing up quite a vibrant green. And if, any, if at any point, you know, while you're mixing your colours, if, if it is too green or too orange or too blue, you can always add water um, to it just to water it down. Just lay down some bright colour. The paper that I'm using is a 300 GSM. It's almost a card. It's acid free. And the thicker the paper that you use, the, the less it will buckle. So the, the more um, it will be able to take um, a watery medium like ink or watercolour. The thinner the paper you use, will it, it may buckle. So if you, you know, if you, if you've got nothing, but if you've got nothing else in your ha in your house other than copy paper, give it a go. But you, you may notice that it, it may buckle, and you are able to purchase, you know, watercolor paper from anywhere these days. Not just art shops. Um, lots of the um, thrift shops, cheap shops have them as well, which is fantastic. So it's totally accessible to everyone. What I also have with me is a little spray bottle of water and I've just grabbed that from um, a thrift shop. I think it was a 
I think it came in two, a pack of two. And I'm going to experiment. I'm just going to spray the water onto the paper now that I have a bit of colour and see what happens. So a bit of an experiment. And what may happen is there will be some bleeding of that, uh, of that colour. Well, now that first lot, you may notice some drips, which is always fun. Just having a bit of an experiment. I'm now going to uh, block in a bit of a, a bit of a background. So I'm going to try these lovely watercolor paints, and I'm going to um, go with a blue because I'm going super colorful today. I'm taking inspiration from my clothing. I'm just going to dip my um, my brush into the water that I've got there, and hopefully that water's not too dirty. If the, if your water has um, become a bit too um, murky, then I would advise changing that, getting some fresh water. So I've got a couple of options for blue in my palette, but I'm going to try this one. And. So the other thing that you can do is you can lay down your, um, what I mean by lay down, paint. Paint your colour onto dry paper, which we'll do on this side. Or something else you can try, because, you know, why not try while you're having an experiment, is wetting the paper first. So there's no colour on my brush, just water. And I'm just wetting it before I'm adding colour. So now I'm going to add the blue and see if that makes a difference. What will it do? So I'm just going to dab it. And the colour will disperse on its own. So you, you can do, why would you do this? Well, you can do this to add a bit of pattern if that's what you want to, you know, wanting to do. Get some deliberate brush marks. Or you can, you know, just drag your brush down. So you, you can sort of see a, a bit of a difference between um, both sides. And you can really load up your load up your brush with with the watercolor or the ink. So still using the watercolor around here where I've pre-dampened the paper, and this is where I have just painted it straight on. You'll, know, you'll notice where the paper is dry, the colour should be more intense. And you can work this way to, to build up layers of colour. So quickly um, lay down some colour. And then go back in and add some more depth. Or, you know, make it darker. It's getting a bit dry, so I just need to add a bit more water to my to my uh, solid watercolour. And I've just got some really lovely kind of um, effects, watercolour effects. The beauty of watercolour is that you kind of don't really know what it's going to do. Um, and you get those lovely watercolour washes using this medium. Okay, I'm going to pick up a really small brush and show you the, um, the acrylic ink. So I'm going to carefully place that down somewhere here on that lid and just dip my brush directly into the ink. And now I'm going to um, Maybe just here on the side where I pre-dampened the paper. And you'll notice it's a little more intense because that is a, um, the acrylic is more opaque and uh, basically pre-mixed and ready to, to paint. So it's a, a watered down version, I suppose, of an like a, a, um, an acrylic paint that would be a little bit thicker.
and the beauty of this is that I'm also creating a shadow and I'm using blue rather than black. Sometimes using black as shadow as, as your shadow um, in a composition can flatten out um, the surface that you're wanting to portray the shadows. Um, and I'm going to just add a little bit of water to my brush and um, continue that bit of blue underneath the underneath the, the shape of the object and that just kind of uh, will reflect what is in the background to the foreground which quite often there is a refraction of colour when uh, when you're viewing something it might not be obvious until you really study and and um, and have a look at that but it's all fun and a bit of an experiment. I'm going to continue working on this part and I will see you soon. This particular colour is fluoro red and I love fluoro. Um, so this will be interesting. I'm going to add some of the fluoro red to maybe the foreground here just to see what, what that will do. I might actually pick up the objects. This is the one I'm going to draw. And sometimes it's interesting to hold it up and have a look and see you know, the detail that is there. Of course it's not going to be the same because this is not fluoro red. But just adding some colour and having a bit of fun and having an experiment. You know, experimenting with these two. So red and green are complementary colours which means they're, the, they're opposites on the uh, colour spectrum. So having these two together will be interesting, especially seeing as this is fluoro. So I'm just adding some lines, just um, some um, vertical lines, just to show that the object is solid and going up and down and a bit of the shadow. And going up to here where, well, it's, it's not obviously not uh, the same suggestion of the object. I'm just setting in some lines there. So I'm just going to block in some, you know, just use some line. And again, this doesn't have to be realistic because it's, you know, you're, you might want to do something completely different, but I'm just having an experiment, seeing what these mediums do and what I can do with line. Okay, so that's the fluoro. So moving on, I ha also have a um, also have a fluoro orange. I did mention I like fluoro uh, a lot. Um, so I will this little object, this little bottle here. I'm going to imagine that I'm looking. You know, this is it. And add some vibrancy. Adding some line. And some, sh you know, some shadow. And then I'll go back in with that, um, with the orange watercolour to add some depth. Okay, so I've used those two. What am I going to do next? Okay, with the brush, I'm going to dip my brush again in some water. And I just want to see what happens when I add a bit of water to the, um, to the paint pen I used. Mm, not much is happening, but there is a very subtle wash. Um, you know, sometimes it's not all about the obvious difference in colour. So there's a, some, um, some very subtle washes happening here and some drips, which is really nice. I mean, if you wanted to, you could you know, even just pop that down on your hand and then with your brush on your hand, you know, kind of do that to add a bit of, 
bit more intensity. And I'll do a similar, I'll just rinse that off. You can change your brushes too. Um, rinse that off a little bit and see what happens when I do that with the, with the orange. Similar, very, very subtle, very subtle, um, which you may not be able to pick up. And I'm going to go back now to the, to the orange that was mixed up earlier. I'm going to go back to this. this object here. Just making it look a little bit more solid rather than having so much white uh, on the page so that it's more of a solid object. Leaving it white will make it appear like it, it is um, kind of disappearing. Okie doke, so what am I going to use next? Okay, perhaps I might um, have these as well. So there's other paint pens. This one is new. Sometimes you need to prime them before you use them. Obviously I haven't used these. I have a thing, uh, I like to buy um, art materials and then hoard them. So there we go, just take, took a little bit of time to, to prime that. So this is an, another, you know, I'm adding a bit more green into the green here. A little bit lighter, very subtle, you can hardly see it. But it just adds a bit of interest, a bit of line work. Um, and just getting a variation of line. You can, you know, perhaps just put some lines to suggest that the plane is, you know, going out. Or that, you know, maybe it's going uh, horizontally. Okay, I think I will try using this um, yellow marker and the side here. So I'm just going to quickly block that yellow in. And then I'm going to go back into it with the yellow ink and then maybe even the watercolour. Um, you can, you know, mix all your mediums together if you like. You can even, you know, at the end of this, you could go back in with your marker again once it's all blocked in and put some more detail in. Um, you know, it, re it really is up, you know, up to the individual how much detail or um, how free uh, you, you want to you be with your work. This yellow is very similar uh, to the acrylic pen I just used. However, it is slightly, um, slightly lighter. And the beauty of using this is that I can just kind of drop it down and it'll just drip down if that's what we want to do too. And I might just experiment on the side here Ooh. with a bit of yellow reflecting back. So all these colours reflecting back onto the surface and behind them. We have one more shape. Perhaps I should just go straight red. I might go back to the palette, the watercolour palette. And there's a darker red and a light and uh, like an orangey red or, or a vermilion. So I'm going to go with this darker red. And block that shape in the back. And you can even use, you can you know get in there and use your fingers if that's what you want to do. Don't always have to use a brush. Uh, of course, you end up with you know dirty hands.
And once that's dried off again, you can go back in and add the intensity, add that, um, add the detail or the shadow behind, if that's what you want to do. So I mentioned before, so you can, what you can also do again, you know, dab it on your hand, a very light wash of a shadow of that reflected color behind. It can even be on the, on the object next to it, which sometimes happens, you know, bleeding with, with the watercolor. Just putting some more depth. And you'll notice where I've gone back with the, um, where I had worked earlier with the, with the straight blue. Um, it's still there and it's, you know, really making that yellow pop. So blue and yellow are complementary colours, which means they're opposite and they work to kind of um, bring each other um, forward. To, for, um, a really good interesting contrast. Okay I hope you've had fun experimenting with colour with and your still life compositions. Um, I've certainly had fun and I'll see you next time.